Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Morgan Grice and I'm currently in the process of setting up my own stationery brand called Odd Orange. I've been filming the entire process from start to finish and I've been posting the series on here on my YouTube channel. This is the second episode in the series, so if you've missed the first one, go back and watch that. It's all about designing the branding for the company. Today's episode is going to be all about designing the new collection. I cover all sorts of things such as choosing all the colour palettes for my stationery, choosing the paper and designing the overall binding of the books. So we'll head on over to Pat Morgan who's planning out the months ahead and starting to design my first collection for this company. So I finished the BC program and it was really, really amazing. I learned so much, so much information. I feel like I've come a long way since then. So since then, I've just been, I've been working a lot. I have like three other jobs, so I've been doing those. I haven't had much time to work on the business, but I've been doing bits and bobs here and there. The business is all registered. I got the certificate in the post. I have registered for corporation tax. So that's really fun. I'm in the process of setting up a business bank account. I need to give the bank a call tomorrow. It's bank holiday today. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. And I've just been organising, planning out the next few months. I did an action plan, which I'll show you in a minute. And it was a little bit demoralising. Basically, I separated the year out into quarters, so every three months, and just put in my tasks and goals for that quarter, what I wanted to get done within that time. And actually writing down everything that needed doing and being realistic about how long I thought it would take me. It was quite disheartening because if I follow the plan now as it is, I won't be launching my business until next February 2022, <laughs> which, you know, I thought I'd have it launched before Christmas, but I am being realistic and I do have three other jobs. So I, the time that I can spend on it is very limited and hand making each book takes a long time. So I've given myself three months just to make the products. It's quite demoralising. I've been quite down since I realised um because I want to leave at least one of my jobs so that I can <laughs> focus on the business it just means I have to stay there a bit longer which is fine so yeah I'll show you my action plan show you where I'm at so far that'll be it for this update really not much has happened to be honest so here's my action plan I'm a little bit of a geek so I made an excel spreadsheet for it but I'm really really pleased with it and it makes me feel so much better having this because before I just had a few notes of each key stage and I was feeling a little bit lost and I wasn't quite sure how long things were going to take me. So actually listing them out like this and giving myself a time frame has really clarified what I need to do and it's made me feel a lot more productive. So as you can see, I have them separated out into three month blocks and then I have an area which is colour coded in odd orange colours <laughs> and that just tells me if it's marketing, operations, delivery or sales focused. I have the objectives such as get a business bank account and set up accounting software and I've written how for more information. So I have that for basically every little thing that I need to do. As you can see I have launch right there. My goal is to get through these as quickly and efficiently as I can while still doing the best job that I can so that hopefully I can launch around in this quarter instead but we'll see. Good morning it's the first of June today I thought I'd do another little update and tell you guys what I've been up to. So basically I have just been finishing off all my admin stuff I managed to get a business bank account in the end, it was a real struggle. I also was doing a really hands-on four-week bookbinding workshop with Birmingham City University, which obviously took a long time to travel there and teach, but also plan and prepare. So yeah, it was, it was really full on last month, trying to get all that done. 
but it's all done now. The university's broken up, so I should have some more free time to work on the business, which will be really nice. So we're doing lots of research into sustainability because I want to make sure my business is sustainable and produces as little waste as possible. But what's really exciting, what I really wanted to talk to you about today, was that I've started designing my collection. So I thought I'd quickly talk to you about the kind of idea and the premise of the collection and show you what I've done so far in my sketchbook and my notebooks. Basically, the collection is going to be called Colour Story and it's exploring colour and the history of colour and creating really beautiful colour palettes for stationery and things like that. So the collection will consist of a range of sketchbooks and notebooks, art prints, greetings cards, stickers, things like that, all surrounding the history and culture of colour. With the sketchbooks, which will be like the hero product, I want to kind of have like a range. So I want to do bigger ones, smaller ones, softback, hardback. Also, I'd like to do a range of papers. So maybe like more of a smoother paper, more of a rougher texture paper, because as an artist, I know how everyone's different. Everyone likes different papers. I want to be able to make sure that I can meet as many needs as possible. It's easier to explain this by just showing you all my notes and things, so I'll just do that now. I've started off the collection with a big mind map. It was only supposed to be like half the page, but it ended up expanding. And this is just all the ideas I've had running around in my head for the last like six to eight months. Started with that mind map and then I did wrote a little bit about the collection. Then um I did the main colours I'd like to research with the addition of lilac. The idea is for each colour, pick a specific colour. So for example, blue, the um, colour would be cobalt. And then I would have a little postcard or a little miniature zine which has the history of cobalt as well as some quotes and other information and colour palettes that you can use as an artist. So it's a little cute little informational booklet to go along with the product. And then the book would be in cobalt with a pop of a complementary colour. And the end papers would be a design that relates to the history. So for example, um, with cobalt, there's quite a fun story about this um, art forger that was found out because he used cobalt in a painting that was supposed to have originated before cobalt was created. And so for that, I would create end papers that related to that story, if that makes sense. And then that design would be used for greetings cards and art prints and stickers and things like that. So that's kind of like the gist of the collection, how I want it to all connect. And there's just some illustrations of my ideas. For the paperbacks, I'd like to have the illustrated end papers as the covers because I think that would be a really lovely touch rather than just a plain cloth cover. Um, so as always, I then started with a collection mood board. So this is just ideas for the design of the book, packaging, things like that. And this is the kind of art style that I want to emulate. Something bold, block colours. I also like risograph prints, so I might do some risograph printing, repeat patterns, things like that. And this is some of my work that I want to emulate. I want to use this kind of style because my work's a little bit all over the place. I like to just basically create what I want to create. So sometimes the styles aren't consistent. So I want work for Odd Orange to be consistent. So kind of be this kind of style. So yeah, I uh, have been, to go with the collection, I've been researching obviously for the colour history part of it so been reading loads of books been doing internet research i've been doing research into like yellow and orange each color i've just been researching into and writing notes about it good morning it's been a week since my last update and i thought i would just show you what i've been working on in that week it's mostly just been playing around with colour and coming up with colour palettes that I like that I can take forward into the design of the sketchbooks. So yeah, I'll just crack on and show you what I've been working on. So I have all this samples of book cloth that I've been collecting just over time. And basically what my process has been is to pick 
hero colour. So, for example, emerald green, I would pick my favourite tone of emerald green, probably this one. And then I would compare it with all the other colours and pick my favourite combinations. This is what I've been doing in my sketchbooks, as you can see, for emerald green. i just been comparing all these different combinations I liked, mixing the colours with gouache to get them as close as I can, just so I can see them in my sketchbook right in front of me, how they look. And I did that with every single colour that I want to explore with the collection. And it was really difficult to pick my favourites because there were a lot that used this pale pink, which I really loved, but I can't use that colour for all of them because I want them all to be unique in themselves, but also work really well as a collection. So I didn't really want to repeat colours. I was just picking my favourites, but also keeping in mind that I wanted them to be quite different. One colour that really surprised me is this combination. It's by far my favourite to go with the lilac and I wasn't expecting this colour to look so nice with it but as soon as I put it next to it I was just like, yes, this is the one. <laughs> so I went through this morning and picked out my favourites, which ones I'd like to take forward and then I put them all together here just so I could see what it looks like as a collection next to each other. I think I'm really happy with it. The only issue I'm struggling with now is that I love every single one and I want to release them all. But the plan was to release three or four and then if it does well to release the other colours. If I had the budget, I'd do them all. Budget and time because it takes a while to make everything. So yeah, I think my absolute favourite is this one, this one, this one. But I also really like that one. And that one, and that one as well. Oh, it's so difficult. I don't know what to do, but we'll see. Hopefully I'll come to a decision soon. Good morning. It's the 14th of June, 2021 today. And it's quite an exciting day. I'm going to be uh, making some dummy books and I've had a bunch of paper samples sent to me in the post. So I'm going to be testing out some papers, trying figure out what kind of papers that I want to use. They're all really, really cool. I can't wait to show you. It's all like recycled kinds of papers and things like that. But for those of you that don't know, a dummy book is kind of like a small book that you use to, usually it's like in children's books and you use it to figure out the layout of the book and how the individual spreads are gonna look. But I use it for book binding to create a small, like a tiny, tiny little book so I know what the format's going to be like and the binding and the covering materials and things like that. It's basically like a tiny little sample about having two loads of materials to make life-sized sample. So yeah, I'm going to be filming that and showing you guys how they look in the end.
so I'm back now. It is the afternoon and I have finished making all my little dummy books and I can't wait to show you how they look. They're really cute. So this one I made is just a simple like saddle stitch one. Since I haven't designed the end papers or front covers yet, I've just gone with this black card but um, it's just stitched and I'm planning on making like a set of them with the illustrated covers on so you get like a set of three or something so yeah they're probably gonna have a cloth spine as well and i tried out this new binding technique that i've never done before but i've seen a lot of notebook companies do this kind of paperback lay flat binding so this is it i don't know if you can see it, it has like grooves along the spine and it's very much like um, a case bound hardcover book but with paper instead so this is yeah how it looks and it should open flat obviously these aren't perfect they're just little tiny little books that i made really quickly <laughs> but yeah i really like this i'm going to try another paperback binding a little bit a little bit like the mole skin which is glued um fully on the cover and back cover and having a curved spine that isn't glued um, this one is glued um, where the joints are, right here, like that. And then I've done two hardcover designs. This one's very similar to my previous stationery collection, if you ever saw that. It's a different coloured cloth spine with squared edges. So I tried that out, but my other idea was to have the complementary colour along the fore edge, so where the book opens, so that when it's in the bookshelf, the spine will be the correct colour. So, uh, for example, the dominant colour for this one is lilac, and the story and the history that goes along with it is lilac. So I wanted it to be visible in the bookshelf, or oh, that's the lilac book, but I still wanted to have like a nice complementary colour. So I thought it was really nice to have it along the edge like that, the fore edge. I know it's in a book that has the um, book cloth along here. I think it's quite a unique style. Whereas this one, um, I've seen lots of people do this kind of binding. So yeah, I really like this. It's a little bit unique, a little bit different. This was what I was planning on going with all along. I just wasn't quite sure how I'd execute it and if it would look good. So now that I've done this dummy book, I'm really pleased with it. I'm really excited to take it further and make lots and lots of books like this. It's really cute. <laughs> so yeah, these are the three or well, four little dummy books I made, which I love. I love making dummy books. After lunch, I'm going to be testing out some papers and I will take you along with me. So I've just finished my lunch and I've put all my paper samples out. I've got a bunch of other samples for prints and things like that, but this is all the paper I've got for now. I'm just going to be going through and testing them and finding my favourites and then most likely ordering in full sheet samples of the ones that I like. So I've tried, especially with the notebook paper, to only get recycled paper. So there's one company that I order samples from and all of their papers are recyclable. You could just, there's so many lovely papers. There's recycled paper, there's um, tree-free paper made from things like bamboo and plants that grow really quickly so they're more sustainable. Uh, paper that's made from recycled coffee cups, things like that. I want to make sure that my company's as sustainable as it can be. So I want to make sure all the paper is recycled, as well as being really nice writing and art paper in general. See, so yeah, I have these books of samples. Some really nice coloured paper, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, and I've also got a few samples from a wholesale website of lots of different paper in and I have this G.S. Smith book which is absolutely beautiful. I feel like every designer has this 
but it's just like all their paper. So I'm just gonna go through, find their most sustainable recycled ones and request samples of some of my favorites so I can test them out and their services out. With the sketchbook paper, again, my most important thing for me is trying to find a recycled or sustainable paper, but also because it's art paper, it needs to be really good quality. It needs to be mixed media and be able to take watercolor, gouache, colored pencils, crayons, pastels, all sorts of stuff because I that's what I like to use my paper for. I like a really heavy duty paper. So yeah, I've ordered a bunch of samples from Jackson's Art. Loads, loads of different art papers there. Some more there. I've also ordered some pads of some other papers that I like the sound of, but there are a few more samples that I want to order. So it's probably going to be a continual process. So it's the next day, I spent all afternoon and evening testing out loads and loads of different papers. As you can see, this is only about half of it. I have had some success and some failure. Uh, with the notebook paper, um, the recycled papers that I showed you earlier were amazing. And I found about three different styles that I really, really loved. The tree free one was gorgeous to write on. There was another one with recycled post industrial waste paper, which was really lovely. I also found one that was made from like, it was like reused plant materials and things like that. It, anyway, they were really, really lovely. So I've emailed the supplier and asked for more information and prices on that. So hopefully they won't be too expensive, we'll see. And I found, as you can see here, loads of G.S. Smith paper that I love, which I have figured out the price of from the website and I have requested some more full sheet samples of those so I can do some more testing and figuring out what I like. Art paper has been a bit of a nightmare. I've tried all of these, as you can see, I tried like all my mediums on them and I'm really struggling to find the right paper. I really love all of these watercolour paper, hot press paper, but they're all 300 GSM, which is great for watercolour paper, but not great for a sketchbook. From my own experience of binding, anything above 190 kind of warps the spine, isn't comfortable to open. I'd like to do a series of sketchbooks with 300 GSM paper, but it'd have a different binding. But for now, I'm kind of going for a thinner sketching paper that's mixed media, it can handle a lot of things. It needs to be smooth, it needs to be cream coloured, and it needs to have a lot of strength to it. This is just from my own research. I know that that's what I prefer and what my fellow artists generally prefer. Of course, everyone's different, but that was the most rated kind of paper. The two that I have here, these are 150 GSM. I'm not a fan of this one so much because I don't think it's as smooth as I would have liked, especially with the wax crown. This one, I really like the finish of it. It's 150 GSM. I feel like it warps a little bit. So it's not perfect and I want the paper to be perfect. I might just end up using my favourite kind of paper, but I'm not sure if everyone will like it because it has got a slight texture to it. We'll see. I've ordered a few more samples, so I'm going to test those out. Hopefully I'll find the perfect paper soon. <laughs> so it's the end of the first part of this episode, designing the collection. I had to split it into two just because it was getting quite long. <laughs> But the next episode, part two, is going to be all about designing the actual patterns and getting my hot foil press and testing that out. So it's a really, really fun episode. So keep your eyes open for that. I should be uploading in the next week or two. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you soon. Bye.